Hi guys, it's Chantel from Red Page Cafe. How are you guys doing? Okay, so uh, I've had a couple of people ask me, they wanted to kind of find out how I distressed um, just digitals uh, that you can get. Now the digitals I'm using are, <laughs> I tend to do that with the ink. I don't know why, but anyways, um, these uh, digitals are from the lovely Julie at uh, Old Design Shop, which I will link her video below. What you need to do this is um, scissors, uh, ink. So I used stress ink, which I re-inked and it was a little dark here, <laughs> but that's okay. We can still use it. Um, this is some of the, Im the journals that I have created with the distressed. Uh, I used these, um, digitals and I made them look old. So I will show you what I did. Um, different little things. This is another one that I did as well. And I used some stenciling, but for today we won't do the stenciling, just the inking and just kind of um, how I go about. First thing I do when I print off my um, digitals, I do not use scissors or a cutter to cut the edges. I use a ruler. Okay, so I just use, go like this, and then I rip. Now, that'll give you a little bit more of a rough edge. Another thing you could do if you're, like, scared of doing that because you've never done it before is use scissors. Now, this little trick I learned from Abby at the Purple Cottage. I think that's what her YouTube channel is. I will link her um, video as well be below. So, let's um, put this aside for a second. These are kind of what I've done. Now, the first thing I do when I print them off, I look at uh, the piece. Because sometimes, like this one doesn't have very many markings. But sometimes, like this one, see how there's like a little fold right there? That's just a natural fold that was on the receipt when she scanned it. So that's kind of what I look for. This one as well has a fold right there. I don't know if you can see that. I look around um, the pictures as well for, oh, see right there, there's another fold. And then I wanted to have them a certain size. So I did fold them this way as well. Um, on the outs, on the back, you could uh, print these on tea dyed paper, um, but I just printed, I think I used a um, digital as well, but I can't remember if this one is Tracy Fox or um anyways i will try to figure out where i got this digital it is just a plain kind of with like tape on it so i also ink the back of these prints okay so here's one to show you and i just inked up uh i didn't ink the back of this one yet all right this one then you can use them Another thing, you can also just, you know, try to get it more uh, old or dirty or whatever you want to call it. So first thing I do is I take my piece and then I use my scissors like Abby and I just follow the edges. Now I just make little notches. I believe I've done this before. Um, just random notches. Okay. They don't have to be perfect. We are going to ink around now the edges of old pieces of uh like this i like the edge here so i'm not going to do nothing of old like receipts and uh all that stuff that letters and stuff like that uh a lot of them don't have a straight corner or the edges of the paper because it's been used is not straight either so that's why i'm doing that and then it gives this lovely oh i just re-inked that so that might be dark Let's see what I can do here to try to get some of it off. Oh, well, it's not bad. Okay. <laughs> so I just re-yanked my pad. Um, so just watch. I guess I didn't have as much as I thought on there. That's why I pressed down once. Um, I tent and I just ink the edges. Just like that. Nothing too fancy. Smanchy. And another thing that I have noticed with receipts is the corners are never like... It's usually because when people use um, turn pages, what do they do? We grab the corners, right? So the corners get kind of used, right? They kind of get, uh, 
more um, markings on the corner. So what I do, first thing I do is I, you can use your inker and just go back and forth. It'll curl up your corner, right? And then I push it down and then I just flip it the other way and I ink, I bring it back and I ink that edge, that little curled up edge. Now you could do this a couple times if you want, ink the edges. So it kind of darkens your edge. And, and then I'll do the other corner. You don't have to do it perfectly. Uh, there is absolutely no rhyme or reason as to why all of, when I ink any or make try to make him look distressed, any of my papers any are never the same. There's not one that is the same at all. So this one, you can also rip your paper, which maybe we could do with this one. I'll just show you what I mean. See, I just folded it in half like that to give it a mark, right? You don't, most papers are folded in funny ways when you get them. I just kind of play around. I I work with what I feel would would be um, how this receipt might look if it was folded in somebody's pocket. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I just kind of play around with it and keep inking until I like what it looks like, okay? Another thing I just mentioned as well is... Um, you could rip it. So don't be scared about this. One of these little notches could also be where a fold is. So you could go like that. Because most receipts are not in perfect condition. So I like the curled edges like that. Another thing you could do is rip your paper. Yes, I said rip. <laughs> I don't know if my head was in that frame the whole time. I just noticed how close I was to the phone. Okay, so you could rip your paper like that. Yes, I am ripping my paper. And what I do is I fold it like that and then I ink it. And if your dabber or whatever you're using is not too full of ink, then you can play around with it and it helps it like roll in. It just gives a fun effect to your papers. Now, these you could use on, I'll show you uh, an example of how I use that. So there's your little ripped area. So for example, this guy has that ripped, right? And these ones, I really wanted them more grungy. So that is why I added, like I literally just covered it. Another thing that you may notice with receipts, you sometimes get, get thumbprints. Um, so what I do, instead of putting my thumb in the ink, obviously, um, I just put it like I use the dabber almost like it was a thumb thumbprint. So I just, shoop, just like that. So it kind of gives you that effect of almost a thumbprint. Um, so I don't know if this is helpful, or not, but this is kind of how I go about. So then I do the other side. If I'm going to just put it in a journal, or if I'm gonna use it as a background like this, I would not do the back because that's just kind of wasting my time. But these ones are gonna go in the journals. Um, if you guys are wondering, there is still some of these journals um, available. If you are, if you want one, I will link uh, the video of the flip through below as well, or in the end uh, notes or whatever you call it, and uh, <clears throat> you can go check it out. At the end of the video, I'll link it, and uh, so you can see what what they look like inside. Uh, there is still about five, I think, or four left. So uh, they are still available. I know a lot of people. Um, not necessarily everybody follows me on Instagram. I do have an Instagram shop there. I am working towards uh, opening a uh, doing a website and a blog. So. It's just not completed yet. So here you go. You got two different looks and still looking pretty grungy, right? Now this one, we'll just do uh, this guy. So again, I use my scissors and I cut around. Same. See how you got, I don't know if you can see that. You've got a little marking here. I will ink that. So what I will, I'll do is actually find the little fold and then just fold on that line, bring it ink the edge and then it'll just make it come up a little bit more right in your and then in, there's another line in the middle here that's kind of what I look for I look for the natural folds in the digital 
Now, these ones are not natural folds, but that's okay. I'm still going to mark them. I'm still going to not mark them, ink them. And I'm not too concerned about the paper being folded in funny ways. Um, I don't know. It just adds texture, I think. So there you go. You got your marking. Another thing you could do is make it heavier at some places, like an added like fold, because most stuff does not get folded properly. And or darker. As you can tell, I had more ink there. So this is kind of how I go about. I look at the digital and I kind of look for natural folds. <laughs> That's a big fold fold. So I'm going to try to make it kind of work in my advantage. Don't overthink it. Um, just play around with it. It all usually works out. There's another fold kind of right there. Another thing you can do is just crunch it like that and then ink that kind of bend and then you can fold it back out right so and then another thing you could do is bring this one out a bit and then you just oh i forgot to do the notches around so that's kind of what i look for now um because i'm making junk journals and because the, these journals are quite grungy i'm not too concerned about them being perfect I don't want these um, papers to be um, like flat and perfect. I I love grungy stuff, so if you haven't noticed that yet. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's kind of how I go about. So I cut the edge, they don't need to be perfect. And yeah, I just kind of go down and look at it as I cut, I'm hopefully, in frame because I didn't even check. I'm actually sitting. I had um, issues with my back yesterday. I tweaked it some way, so I'm trying to uh, sit as straight as I can because it tends to uh, bother me if I like the movement of standing up and going down. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, I did a workout this morning. And I feel so much better already just from moving it. I think that might that's my biggest problem. Maybe I was sitting too much. I just turned the wrong way, I think. Anyways, so I'm going to be all right. It'll go eventually. Um, just like anything else, right? It's just part of uh, life. You get curveballs. Another thing you could do is keep curling it and keep marking it. That corner leg. -like see like you can have like those markings you can also do the other side so, they don't need to be perfect I also use these little notches to figure out where to make my markings and I they're really random seriously I don't have any rhyme or reason behind where I just look at it and I guess that's where just play just play and 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 figure out what is what makes you happy what you know and then the thumbprint I usually do somewhere if I feel like I just kind of add um, shadow and, and just play really until I am happy with what the outcome is looking like and I tend to um, ink in a circular way, I guess, because I have this mark, <laughs> which makes me kind of laugh. But so anyways, and my nails get really inky. Another thing um, that I might show you guys, let's see. So that's kind of an idea of how to go about um, inking your digitals to make them look kind of old, right? You can follow um, the, the, the fold as well. So there's like kind of more depth in certain areas. So that's kind of what I've, I've got. See, they're completely, um, they're the same digital, but have a completely different look because of the inking, right? And there's this cool um, little uh, staple punch here. There's like two little holes. Another thing I could, I, will do too is like use your needle and just poke where 
the staple would have gone. And then you can push them the other way and then just ink them. And that will bring that little staple kind of look. So that's kind of what I look when I go about um, figuring out what I want to do. So there's a natural little inky kind of spot there too. Another thing you could do is go behind and push it back kind of forward. And what that does is your paper will get pushed the other way so it pops up on this side. So you, oh shoot, sorry if my head was right in the frame. It'll push it out so you can ink those a little better. Okay, so that's kind of how I do these. And let's see what I'm at with time. Oh, it's already 15 minutes. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this process and I hope that you give it a go. And if you do, I would love to see it, uh, what your outcome is. So anyways, I hope you have an awesome day. And if you want to see anything else, please make a suggestion below and I would be happy to share. Stay tuned. There will be a tutorial, another tutorial. If you haven't seen uh, the video hop, uh, it's also in my videos uh, and I worked with tea bags and I have so many ideas and I didn't get everything done. So I will do a another video. I might even do a, <laughs> um, what do you call them? A playlist of what to do with tea bags. Because if you uh, create junk journals, you are probably dying regular paper and tea dyeing your stuff so you end up with tea bags and then that's another thing you could do with this is use it kind of like tape your tea bags so you would kind of use this for example and stick it where like on the edge like this because it might look dark right now but when you mod podge it kind of makes it like you can see through it let's see if i can find um which I can add to my next uh, video. See, like this guy, you can still see lines through it. Okay. So anyways, I just thought I would mention that and uh, I will see you soon. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe and write a comment. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you all. And I am so excited. Be uh, watch very carefully because there will be a giveaway very soon. I just noticed that I hit um, 1,400 subscribers, which I am super grateful for you guys. And there will be probably a little uh, hidden giveaway in one of my videos very, very soon. So stay tuned. Bye for now.